About three years ago, we did a video about the bump and run shot. And that's when you use your shooter to bump a button that's already in play up into that center hole for 20 points. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. This video is all about knowing when to use that power. Let's take a look. My name is Jeremy Tracy of Tracy Crokinole Boards. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, a comment, a share, swing down and smash that subscribe button. Now a quick recap of the beloved bump and run shot. Typically what happens is it's a situation where there are no opponent's buttons on the board, but you have one or more of your buttons in play. Then you use your shooter to bump one of yours that's already in play up into the center hole for 20 points. If you have any confusion whatsoever about whether or not this is a valid shot, please check out our video about Crokinole's most confusing rule. So you know how to make the bump and run shot and you clearly understand the valid shot rules surrounding the bump and run shot. But if you truly want to reach bump and run mastery, the next level is to understand the strategies of when to go for that bump and run shot and when to leave it alone. What we are covering now is very advanced. So if your crokinole career consists of sitting around on a Friday night having some pops and some giggles with your pals, this may not be overly applicable. You're still gonna see some great highlight reel shots, but you may not find this is something you apply in your next crokinole match. This is the technique and the strategy that you're going to want to apply when your gameplay reaches a level where you're playing against the best of the best of the best. When good shooting alone won't necessarily win you the match, in those situations where you need to combine your good shooting with great strategy in order to have a chance to win. If you're sitting across from someone who is very skilled and super creative about creating 20s out of nothing, you need to be very careful what you leave them to shoot at. That's when these strategy tips are going to be your best friend. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, can you make the shot? That's why in our first bump and run video, we had that fun drill so that you could practice and you could get comfortable with which angles are you able to make that bump and run shot and which ones you can't. So that's your first question, can you make the shot? But there are also going to be situations you find yourself in where you are forced to make the bump and run shot. And you may go, oh, that's kind of weird. But one of the great things about Crokinole is every time you play, the board sets up differently. You see different setups and scenarios Areas. So there will be times when both of your shooting lanes are jammed up and you're forced into making that bump and run shot. So obviously that's what you're going to do. What we're going to dig deeper on today is the situations where you do have a choice, where you could make the bump and run or your other option would be to drop to one side or the other and have an open shot at the 20. Should you go for that bump and run or should you go for the open 20? Now, if you wanna go for that bump and run shot because it's fun and you love the challenge, please, by all means, go for it. As we start digging into more advanced strategy and tips, the last thing we wanna do is take the fun out of Crokinole. But most people will say, that beating a great player at Crokinole is a lot of fun. Some people get excited just by winning a round against a great player. And Tracy just got to put this in the house. And he makes the 20. A little bit of celebration too, I guess. Scoring two points against Justin Slater at the moment. So childish. So we're going to dig into three different examples just to give you an idea of some of the thinking and the strategy at the, at the top level. And with each of these, what we're going to do is we're gonna stay focused on if it's straight up the center, just to make it easier to explain. But the same would apply if it was, if the buttons were positioned so you'd be shooting up either of those alleys. So the first example we'll look at is you've got a disc that's sitting here in what we would call no man's land. It's, it's in a spot that if your opponent is looking at that, so basically you wanna think about what is your opponent looking at? It's a bit of a chess match at this point. So this here, your opponent doesn't have, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but your opponent does not have a very good shot at making a 20. There's no way they're going to angle off this button, catch a peg to, to have anything uh, 20 related come out of that. So in that case, I would leave this alone. I would be more inclined to recommend that you shoot up one of the lanes and leave this where it is. Because what you wanna ask yourself is, what opportunities does my opponent have now? 
and what opportunities is my opponent going to have after I successfully make my next shot. So if I shoot an, uh, a bump and run 20, now look at the opportunity they're looking at. When it's their shot, now they have a chance to catch my button, a peg, and have something positive come out of that. That's why I would leave it right where it sits. In that case, I would opt out of the bump and run. So the second, op the second setup I'm going to talk about, again, up the middle, let's say you've got your button that's sitting back here between the pegs. In this case, I would absolutely strongly recommend that you go for that bump and run. Same thing. Right now, they're looking at an opportunity, but if you're able to successfully Let's pretend I hit that. If you're able to successfully pull off a bump and run, now your shooter is back here. Look at what your, your opponent is looking at now. I mean, they're dead in the water. They don't have a chance of creating something positive out of this. So you look at what were they looking at before you make the shot compared to what opportunities are they gonna have after you make the shot. Now, same thing. When it's out here, I would be less inclined. This is option number three that we're, scenario number three that we're looking at. I'd be much less inclined to go after a bump and run in this situation because they already have almost no chance so I wouldn't do the bump and run one because it's tougher this far away and two why not just drop over here the goal is that you're going to successfully drop a 20 and this is what your opponent is still going to be looking at so in summary, here's what you want to consider if you want to reach mastery level of a bump and run guru hey. Look at the board and consider what opportunity does your opponent have before you shoot and what opportunity are they going to have after you shoot. And make sure that you're choosing the option that leaves them with the least possibilities to work with. Happy bumping and running and make it a great day. Self five. Ow. Applicable. That was close. Applicable. That was close. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Still rolling, aren't we? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Yeah. Yep, that was fine. Pick it up.